it works this time. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't last time. Uh -oh. it, it probably won't because it's too much light. It, could we? Is it possible to lower them or turn them? Yes. Actually, it's turning, Lucas. It's what is turning. turning? Yes. No, it's not. Yeah, it is it turning. It is. <laughs> it's turning, honey. It's so that safe. Yeah. I don't know about that. I don't think, I don't think we're in control of what the lights. Yeah, your robot moves, which is like, yeah, and it know, turns it's too. Supposed to turn it's following the light. <laughs> Doesn't really have one. It's KFC Chicken Bot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you didn't name it right, honey. Yeah, I did. You did name it. What's it? KFC Robot. Okay. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> there it goes. There it goes. There it goes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's got an edge sensor, it just happens to walk around on two feet. Yeah. <laughs> Would you like to come? Uh, hello everybody. Um, I was here last month and I had a minor servo blowout, so I'm able to uh, demonstrate my robot. This is a robot I made out of DVDs, um, homemade edge sensors, and an Arduino Uno with a shield on top. Um, a lot of people seem interested in the rubber on the edges. It's just like this liquid rubber. You buy the dip tool handles it, things like that. Kind of made a reservoir of it and ran the DVDs through it, and then took the reservoir away and let it rotate as it dried. So it was a little traction on the table. And we're going to run it and see if it can make it all the way across. So let's see. Hopefully it will this time. And the jittery is new. I don't know what that is, but. Working really well at home earlier. Kind of tries to square itself to the table. Wow, nice. And then it'll. Oh. What are we doing? <laughs> All right. Well, he's supposed to do a 90. Oh, there he goes. Like I said, I don't know what the jury is. That's kind of new, but. Maybe he's just nervous. So you try it right as you do. There you go. Yeah, yeah it's, it's only this mode, this forward mode, that's kind of jerky and all of a sudden. But. Could it be the surface or something? No, I don't think it's the surface. It's the, it's the servos jittering for some reason. So, uh, you say the home's main uh, detector, what did you do? There you go. All right. Well, he made it all the way across the way. So. so the um, IR sensors here are actually just an IR LED, um, a, a square IR LED and a square IR sensor that I literally glued together, um, stuck a little piece of uh, black electrical tape in between them to uh, isolate them, and then it just shoots the IR down onto the table and bounces back up. Uh, and it, it's, uh, there's only two, uh, two resistors involved, and uh, you get a, a depth of about three inches. It can, it can sense between three inches. I'm not, I'm the, if I really played with the Resistors, I could probably get a little bit more, but um, on our Arduino, it senses between about uh, 200 and uh, 900. And Arduino, the analog pin will, get, will sense up to, what is it, 13, 1365 or something? I forget what the limit is on that, on that. So that's pretty much it. I also made the little brackets that hold the IR LED out of acrylic, uh, popped them in the oven over a little wooden block, and when it came out, it kind of bent it down and held it until it broke. Cool, awesome. Can I have a pen? I started thinking. Very good. Okay. Wayne. I have to remember to keep turning on the mic. Okay, I see a whole slew of robots over there. Is anybody going to show them off? Yeah, I was going to show them off.
Okay. Oh, oh, this is cool. Okay. Oh. Okay. Hey, um, so I'm Ryan, uh, the, the host uh, here at Google, and uh, we have done some robotics projects here, and I've been meaning to show this off for a while, but when we were meeting in different buildings, I was just way too lazy to bring it there, so I just got it from upstairs. Um, this is a little bit old, but this was meant to do mapping, and we wanted to see if we could map something like an office space um, using Ross Java, which I've talked about before, is a a port of the robot operating system from Willow Garage to Java so it can run natively on Android. And so the tablet here, this is a, a Zoom, um, would use the USB host to read into this USB bus um, that would read from this Hokoyu laser that would pan up and down. And then there's this Hokoyu up here that would uh, be static and get a plane. So the one down here would be the main one for localization and mapping. And then this one was basically cliff detection. So it was looking if you were gonna run into anything. Um, there's just a power board down here and then an Arduino that was talking to the motor controllers and the uh, encoders. Um, the base is a parallax uh, kit. So you can go to parallax.com and you can buy um, these motors which are made by Denso. I think they were originally for uh, car windshield wipers. And they're incredibly powerful and quiet. Um, and then these wheels uh, ride very, very smooth. So um, the base is a kit that I really like. It's uh, really stable. And then we hack together the rest. I don't have it running, but uh, our intern over there, Daniel, is working on getting some of this stuff uh, back operational by next month, hopefully before you leave your internship. We can uh, demo it for you, but he's going to demo something else mapping related. Okay, I, I see a bunch of NASA stuff here. Is the, the NASA person on? Oh, uh, we're going to. Yeah, we're going to. Uh, it's going to be covered somewhat with the uh, presentation here. Got it. Involving Max Kernel. Okay. We're going to be do, doing some demos afterwards. Okay, good. I, yeah. I just wanted to make sure we're covered there. Uh, it looks like we have a balancer over there. Is that somebody? Do, do you want to continue with the Google demo? So he's not in the mapping right now. Oh, okay. uh, well, get it running. Right. Yeah, I would. Well, let us know when, when, when it runs. Yeah. 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 It looks like we have a balancer there. Is that part of the pre presentation or is that somebody else? Part of the presentation. Sorry. Okay, I see one there. Do we want to? Yeah. What part of code? Is that? You lost, you lost the girl. Yeah, there's Carter. You want to show your robot in case there's any new kids? I haven't seen it. Put Crane over here. So, tell us what it is. Okay, 
Um, got have some hands coming up there. Come on down. Come on down. You guys can do John and John, are you, is that your robot? Not, not tonight. that can fit in the car, that I can demo, that can actually go and open the door. 
So hopefully next month's Florbot challenge will work. So this is a stage two prototype. I'm trying to work out the mechanical parts before I work about worry about autonomy. So right now it just has uh, bounded autonomy with uh, three sensors. manager here, not an engineer, and so I'll translate what he said into dumbed down PM speak, which should help the kids. Um, that's about my level. So the shiny black thing that he had on the top, he was calling a LiDAR, basically sends out a, a laser, but it's in the infrared, so you can't see it. Um, and it's sending it out, and it has a mirror inside that bounces back and forth. And so there's this laser that's going back and forth across the room. Um, really fast, and it's measuring the distance to all the walls, and then it records that distance. And then the little orange thing on there that he called a nine dov uh, IMU is because um, he just likes acronyms is a nine degree of freedom uh, inertial measurement unit, and so that's measuring uh, basically where gravity is 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 one of the things is gravity down, forwards, or or, or sideways. And then as you shake it, it basically mentioned, uh, measures shaking, it's the accelerometer. And then it also has a, a compass in it, a magnetometer, so it knows where north is. And so with all of that information, it knows basically how that laser is pointed, and it knows the measurement to all the walls nearby. And so with that data, you can run SLAM, uh, simultaneous localization and mapping, and recreate the map. Um, and the university he mentioned was in, in uh, Munich. Uh, it's called Hector SLAM. And so SLAM is a concept, this localization and mapping, and um, there are many different ways to do it. Uh, you can do it real time, you can do it post time. And this university in Munich has just this amazing post-processed SLAM. It's, it's phenomenal. Um, and hopefully we'll see those results now that I've hyped it up a lot for you to think. Oh, hit the present on the remote. Interns don't know how to work with them again. Hit the blue button.
So essentially what I just did uh, earlier was capture a bunch of data and um, it's really just you know taking all the 3D scanning, so it's like you know point, 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 capturing all this data, capturing the IMU, and then say your holding is crooked, but the IMU knows, so it essentially takes this crooked laser scan, you know, rotates it by whatever degrees, and then um, puts it into the Hector Slam, which is awesome, you know, right out of the box if you need it, and then hopefully I'll show you. And if it wasn't clear, this is all parts of ROS, the robot operating system, the open source system from Willow Garage. So even though this was a handheld thing, you could use the same thing on your robot. It's the same thing that would run on the robot we showed over there. So although it might look, you can kind of see the, the uh, Coordinates moving around and stuff, so that's the person with the IMU moving around. Fortunately, the uh, battery lead came out whenever I was doing this over there. So you have a very, not very visible map. You can kind of see walls, you know, off to the side. Um, it's also capturing a lot of your heads and bodies and everything, so it's not going to be quite clear. But uh, uh, essentially, the idea is, you know, you walk through a room like this without a bunch of people in it that's this dense, and you'll be able to get all the walls populated and everything and you could create maps very easily so you can just you know walk through the place and you have a map so um, it's a really fun project for me and uh, this is no it's what this no <laughs> the, the battery leak came out on this yeah. um, he's new here and he already knows to blame the battery <laughs> <laughs> all right I think that's about it but uh, yeah so I guess all of this is available online as well. Um, there's Ross Java in that repository. There's the Google code for doing uh, Google handheld scanning. So you can go pick yourself up a Coil LiDAR and IMU and, and do this yourself to the point. Similar things for just you know having you know a laser scanner and you could just be scanning an object and you can take that data and create meshes with it as well. Uh, one one difference is this uh, slam is normally for a flat plane, so it's for a map traditionally, and the scanners you mentioned are traditionally to get a 3D mesh. Um, uh, but Ted was talking about he's got the MakerBot now and he's gone crazy printing things. Um, there's actually a cheap 3D scanner, if any of you were interested. We always talk about the 3D printing, but you need to print some thing. So how do you get the thing? Um, it's called the David Scanner. It's, you're not going to get super high accuracy, but it's a webcam and a laser pointer. And you wave the laser pointer over the object and it triangulates the shape and gives you a mesh. It's, it's a few hundred bucks and, and it'll get you something. Uh, the next thing up is probably something like the next engine, which is probably like fifteen hundred dollars, and you know, so there's a big leap there. But you can scan something in minutes uh, and then print it. I think we're done. Okay. So, um, ah, wow. so uh, some of you are familiar with the uh, the Oculus robot that we made earlier this year. Kickstarter troubles and whatnot. Uh, but I got a maker bot. <laughs> I got a maker, I got a maker bot, and uh, uh, I basically we had an intern this summer, and I tasked the intern with taking all the 3D models that we had for the robot and making them so that we could print them on the maker bot, and then uh, spent a lot of time uh, filling with the maker bot to the point now where we have really great output quality. So this entire robot, other than the treads and the metal pieces, was done on a MakerBot, which, you know, it's a $2,000 
3D printer, and the consumables cost $30 a kilogram. Okay, which and I bought, I don't know, five kilograms of consumables, and I have a whole box of parts that we printed that weren't the right shape or size or whatever, and haven't even made a dent in the five kilograms of consumables. So the whole, all the plastic parts here were printed for pennies, and uh, I want to say maybe it takes 10 hours worth of printing to print all the parts to make a complete robot. So, I mean, I'm just completely blown away at how the print quality has come from the cupcake. And I blame the, my decision to buy a MakerBot on Dave Curtis. And he, he blazed the way by basically, he and uh, Shiloh built uh, a cupcake together and produced some, some early plastic parts with it and made a lot of things and constantly improved it. And I remember we asked him one day, I said, hey, uh, so what do you think about the MakerBot? And, and Dave said, well, it's more of a way of life than it is actually a 3D printer. <laughs> and so it's a lifestyle decision. So, uh, so it's come a long way since then. And this is the ones that these parts were made on is the replicator, which is the one that was uh, just released in January, and they showed it profusely at the Maker Fair. Um, but anyway, we were able to take the robots that we had and print out new ones and in cool colors and stuff. And um, you want to come help me run it, and then we can drive it around and stuff while I talk about it. That's the purple one. Uh, which one's the purple one? That's the purple one. And. Um, so in this case, the robot can get up and down and drive around. Um, for those of you who weren't familiar with it before, um, this is a robot we've shown at the club before. Um, basically, uh, the robot communicates with the phone via Bluetooth. Um, the phone can actually live on the robot, um, and it can have a little. Um, um, it can have a little. Uh, uses a suction cup to hold the phone, so when it drives around. Um, and then Brandon here got a version of Ross Java running on the phone, so you can have a full-on Ross robot but that lives on a tabletop. That was the uh, initial intention. So anyway, um, come around and check it out if you're interested in MakerBot stuff. I'm totally fanatical about the darn thing now since uh, I've spent you know, a bunch of time to live with it. The most impressive part on the entire robot that Dave was pointing out is this little tiny one. We're able to actually print servo splines on the MakerBot and have them make with a servo, which is a really tiny little thing. And um, so that gives you an idea of what the resolution it can be is. So, so, that's, yeah. Yeah. so that, it's turnkey, right? You spend your money and it comes and you start printing. Right, you don't have to assemble it like the original one. The original one was a kit. This one shows up in a box, you set it up and you can conceivably start printing right away. Although it doesn't really actually work out that way. You spend your first two or three days doing nothing but going through a list of tweaks that you found online that you should make to it. And then eventually it comes to a point where you can get reasonable printouts. And then we tweaked it for a month probably and then arrived at a point now where we can get plastic coming off of it that looks as good as other 3D printers, but you know, for nothing. Questions? Yes? Oh, uh, we'll make the other ones go later on, and you guys can come around and check it out. Uh, but after the presentation, during the interactive uh, part, yeah. Put a cheat sheet up for how to make plastic. Yeah, I was gonna. I started. I have a. I have a website with a blog and stuff, and I started. I was gonna start putting some of the things on there. One of the guys, one of the early, the former president of this club, Chuck McManus. He just bought a MakerBot, and I just sent him this huge list of stuff, and he got his up and running really well within a couple of days. So there's some a few items that you just got to do if you get it, and come find me or whatever, and I'll give you all the tips on how to make it work like like a dream. So anybody else? You? Yes. <laughs> ah, okay. So he has an application on the phone. It's a little joystick and it allows you to drive the robot around and uh, make it stand up and lay down. And then we have these funny little interactive character apps that live on the phone 
that uh, that isn't on the phone that's on there right now, but it, it's funny and silly and it's a lot like a toy. So it's a lot of fun to drive the robot around and uh, later on, maybe you can come around and we'll fire it up and you can drive them around. Well, we made them. We made them uh, just down the street from here. We printed them out on a printer that prints in plastic. So it's very cool. Yeah. Exactly, the red one is cool, and it's this is the new MakerBot has a dual extrusion head, so it can actually emit two different colors of plastic at the same time. So you can see the side here has a, a red inlay that was printed using red, while the main part was printed in black. And so you can actually make inlay parts and things that are two colors at the same time. It's very strong. Um, it's ABS, it's the plastic that it prints in. Um, it's not as strong as the plastics that come from Shapeways, um, which is a, like the cheapest printing bureau that's out there. Um, and the Shapeway quality is much better than this, but for, you know, for a $2,000 printer that lists it's on your desk, it's pretty darn good. And then the other material you can print in is PLA, which is a lot more brittle, but it's a higher resolution and a better print quality. Compared to a $20,000 dimension. Correct. Compared to a $20,000 dimension or there's a $50,000 dimension printer that lives over at the tech shop that prints almost equivalent output quality to this. But the Shapeway print quality is better than this. And we printed an entire robot from Shapeway. Actually, how many? We've got enough parts to build three. About, about three robots and it was about $250 for all the parts to, to build three robots from Shapeway. And each robot probably has 12 different plastic parts that it needs to put together. Another question? One more? How much does it pay? Oh, it doesn't, um, well, we made them, so we're not selling them, so it doesn't, I don't know. It costs whatever the time that it takes to print, I guess. So, yeah, make me an offer. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay, thank you. Excellent. Right, we have a very short poster presentation. Just bring it to your hand. The people in back aren't going to be able to see this. Yeah. Okay. Sit down. There's not much here at the end. Okay. Hi. Nice to meet you all. My name is Dan. Uh, just came to the valley a month ago. And I have a confession to make. I really hate folding laundry. Really. I, I'm, I'm bad at it. I can't help my wife. I hate it. And basically, I just want to get rid of it. So, this is Foldimate. Foldimate is a robot we invented in order to help us fold laundry and clothes. Think about it. We have laundry and we have clothes and we have a washer and we have a dryer but we don't have a folder. Now we do. This is folding it. We have a proof of concept in Israel that actually works and if you approach me later I'm looking for co-founders basically to join me. We're already two years into the process and I came here just to make this uh, be and have really basically laundromat to retail clothing stores and households eventually. So if you have any questions or you want to see what we have in Israel, and we have a great website that you can see more about it and read more about it, that's it. I'm just looking for co-founders and great to be here. Thank you very much. Forgot to say the most important thing, like how do you use it? So it's very, very simple. Think of a dryer, okay? So you take it from the dryer, you take the item, you hand it over to do two automatic claps in the folding mate, and four seconds later it's already professionally folded under. That's it. Okay? What's up? Yeah.